Incidents relating to vaginal mesh implants have left thousands of women worldwide living in constant, debilitating, chronic pain, and it is therefore welcome that the, that the Welsh Government undertook a review of the use of such implants. I would like to thank Professor Emery and his team for their report. While survivor groups would like an immediate ban on all use of such mesh and tape implants, I accept that these implants have benefits for some women, but their use should not be widespread and should be controlled. I therefore welcome the Task and Finishes Group recommendations to improve the pathway, to encourage greater informed choice and to affirm that mesh surgery should be a last resort. Cabinet Secretary, the Task and Finish Group made a number of recommendations, and I am grateful that you have indicated that you support their implementation. When do you expect the implementation group to complete its work and ensure that all recommendations are put in place? Cabinet Secretary, as you are aware of the research, are you aware of the research being undertaken at the University of Sheffield? published in the Journal of Neurology and Neurodynamics, which supports the use of a softer and more elastic material, better suited, in, better suited for use in the pelvic floor, and one that releases oestrogen into the surrounding pelvic tissue to form new blood vessels and ultimately speed up the healing process. They concluded that a different material, polyurethane, would be a much better material to use as a vaginal mesh due to its flexibility and its likeness to human tissue. The next step is clinical trials. Cabinet Secretary, can you ensure that Welsh patients have access to these trials? I look forward to seeing the details of the new care pathway and support available to women who have stress urinary incontinence or pelvic organ prolapse. Diolch thank you very much. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you. I'll, um, I've tried to deal with the point, the first question raised about the implementation group and a timescale uh, to complete their work. I will, of course, report back to members, but as the group has yet to meet, uh, to consider how to take forward those recommendations, I'm not in a position to give uh, an undertaking or commitment on that today, which I hope members will understand, but I will report back about that. On your second point about the research published by, uh, by Sheffield, um, there's a variety of research that is carrying on about alternative surgical options, whether that is uh, artificial or biological material to be implanted. Uh, but I can't really comment on the clinical trial that they're looking to undertake. Um, I, I will, though, look to uh, discuss with my office to see if there is something useful that we can come back to members with. But, of course, the government isn't in control of those clinical trials uh, and access to patients. What's interesting in the Task and Finish Group report is I think that there are some people they can identify who are more likely to be at greater risk of complications uh, or, on, or having significant pain after the event. And that's something about understanding and having that conversation about genuinely informed consent with the women that are involved. Because, as I say, whilst, this, uh, whilst MESH has not been banned, whilst I do not have the power to ban mesh, even if I'm minded to do so, I don't have the power to do it. We do need to make sure the consent is genuinely informed and that people understand the nature of what the current problem is and the treatment available for that, but also the risks and the potential benefits for any form of surgery, whether it involves mesh or not. Uh, and that was a really clear part of both the Task and Finish Group's report, but also uh, members who wish to see a change in practice. If we didn't have a ban, then to make sure there was a real change in consent. That was one of the more upsetting things that I heard, um, about actually a number of upsetting things about this particular issue, was where people said that they just weren't told properly what the risks were, and there was no problem at all with it. Uh, and that can't be a way to practice healthcare uh, in the here and now today, let alone in the future.